Cursed panels, infamous panels. Hank Pym hitting his wife the wasp, Janet Van Dyne. That's definitely up there. This panel, on top of having just controversy about it happening at all, also has behind the scenes controversy attached to it. As writer and editor Jim Shooter claimed it was an accident, a result of a miscommunication, a bit brought on by the Marvel method and just timing. So what happened? How did this panel come about? What was the context? And how did it become so attached to Hank Pym? Why can't he shake it? Why is it forever associated with Ant-Man, Giant Man, Goliath, Yellow Jacket. At this point in his history, Yellow Jacket. People still write papers, articles, discuss this on forums. Up to this day, time of recording, I'm including myself in that statement. I'm talking about it too. So let's dive in. I'm Sasha, this is Casually Comics, and let's take a look at the panel that for Hank Pym changed everything. The panel in question comes from Avengers 213, published in 1981, written by Jim Shooter with art by Bob Hall, ink Stan Green, colors Don Warfield. This issue is called Court Martial, and it starts with Yellow Jacket Hank Pym on trial for acting too aggressively in their previous issue in their battle against the Elf Queen. And and last issue will matter. There's even some things that appear that they might be parallels, for example, Elf Queen getting hit. But there's also some stuff that pertains to Hank and Janet in that issue that we'll need to come back to. For this issue, they need to take some time to deliberate and they're gonna reconvene in three days because Elf Queen was surrendering and then Yellow Jacket just shot her in the back. You know, like a hero. It's during this three day period that Hank really disintegrates. Firstly, he shrugs off all of Janet's attempts to comfort him because she's been incredibly supportive. She's trying, she's trying to reach out to him because she can see that their relationship is deteriorating and he's not doing okay. Hank, is it over? What would happen? Hank, oh lover, I don't care what happened. I just want you to hold me. Hank, please, I... Janet, just get away from me. Leave me alone. Haven't I got enough to contend with without you slobbering all over me? Hank. Hank removes himself and he does apologize to Jan, but then he locks himself in his lab for three days. And it's when Jan goes to look for him that things really escalate. Jan comes in and sees he's built a giant adamantian robot, which is not the best thing. Especially because, I mean, he has a history with giant robots like Ultron. It's hard to get past creating Ultron. What are you doing here? Why did you come here? Why? Hank, I was worried about you. I haven't seen you for three days. I've been busy. Why were you spying on me? I wasn't spying. I'm your wife. I just wanted to know that you were all right. I love you. Are you okay, Hank? I mean, she learns that this robot is Sal, and Hank is concocting an unhinged scheme to get himself redeemed. He's built this robot to be able to deflect all the skills and talents of the Avengers, and so they won't be able to stop it, and then he'll swoop in and save the day like a sane person. Janet understandably thinks that this is a bad idea. It's also based off of the false assumption that they're gonna kick him out. He doesn't even know what the verdict is gonna be yet. Even though based on how he was acting prior to this, it was a good chance it would still have been no, but he didn't know that for sure. And also just giant robot trying to kill your friends. Not a great plan. Oh, I'll give it a chance, but when it starts going badly, I'll summon Sal with this remote activator discreetly, of course. He'll attack all of us, including me, and he'll be winning, beating us. Then, at just the right moment, I'll blast his weak spot in. Hank, no, you can't go through with this. Hank, listen to me, please. I, I can't let you, oh. Shut up, I've gotta do this. I've gotta save the day right before their eyes. Don't you see? It's my only chance to redeem myself. It's the only way. And there it is. We'll leave it for a moment because firstly it's a lot, but it also goes on. You've got to understand, I can't let them drum me out of the Avengers. I can't, it's all I have left. Since you had to stick your nose into my business, you're in this with me now, Jan. I'll keep it simple for you. All you've got to do is play along, keep your mouth shut. Got that? Yes, Hank. Good, let's get a move on. We're gonna be late. They go to the meeting, Janet is in big sunglasses to hide her injury, and Hank proceeds to go off the deep end at the court martial, just showing himself to be very unstable. This is all too much for Janet, she tears up, she takes off her sunglasses, and then they all see, they all see the giant black eye. Hank, no more, let it end, I beg you Hank, if you love me, let it end. Odd's blood. Her face, what is the meaning of this? Did, did he strike the woman? I knew it would go badly. Hank, Hank, no, don't. Hank, it's over. Don't do it. Shut up, woman. It's hovering overhead by now. It'll be here in seconds. The menacing robot known as Sal. <laughs> I know it's all very serious, but it's the robot named Sal. It gives me a chuckle. No, no, the killer robot, Fred. Summoning the robot goes badly, and he's not even able to defeat it. Janet has to defeat it using the weak spot that he talked to her about in the lab. And so he slinks off in disgrace because now he really is kicked out. Jan, I, what should we do? What can we do? For me, nothing. I'm okay now. 
you know, I feel like crying, but I just don't have any tears left. So that was a lot of a lot, and it changed the way people looked at Hank forever, and that extends beyond the one panel itself. It's not just the panel, it's everything around it as well. So before we get into the behind the scenes, let's look at what was presented. So what the average reader would have access to without looking behind the scenes or later blog posts or letters or interviews. Just you're sitting there, you're reading the Avengers and then pow, right in the kisser. As presented, Hank clearly struck her and this was also after a period of escalation. Hank had been shown to be getting more and more unstable for a while. He'd also been shown to be being crueler and crueler to Janet. It was basically depicting an escalating story of abuse. Even though that period happened pretty quickly, it wasn't as though their relationship had been one of the more stable or healthy ones ever, even from the start. But it really started to escalate in the recent era at that time period. For example, in the prior issue, we'd had scenes of him destroying her clothes. What's taking so long, Janet? I'm almost ready. I want to be beautiful for you, lover. I'll bet Santo never went to this much trouble for the Lone Ranger. Probably not. Depends what fanfic you're reading, though. What are you reading, Janet? And still later, aren't you dressed yet? I can't decide which costume to wear. I have so many, but at least I've narrowed it down to two. Why don't you decide for me, darling? All right, there, <gasps> where's the other one? Hey, I, I can't believe it. You destroyed it with your sting blast. So what? Like you said, you got lots. He'd also belittled and yelled at her in front of the Avengers when she tried to help find a solution for a problem that he was having because he was having a hard time reintegrating into the Avengers. He was butting heads with them and she was trying to smooth things over. He had recently rejoined full time and it just wasn't going very well, whereas she was a regular full time member. Okay, we're all set. I'm not. I just discovered that my disruptor is on the fritz. This stupid son of modulator circuit is acting up. What a nuisance. I, I think I can fix it though. Hey, lover, don't do that. I'll just ring up Jeeves over at the East Side Penthouse. He can grab one of those doohickeys from your lab there and zip right over in the limo. It'll just take a few minutes. You love doing that, don't you? You love taking every opportunity to flaunt your blasted money. Well, I don't need your butlers, your cards, or your money. And I don't need you. Oh, Hank, I only wanted to help. Yeah, well, I'll help myself, got it. Let's go, Avengers. It's so uncomfortable, and the team is just witnessing this. It's quite clear that there are, at the very least, problems in their relationship, but the way he's treating her, it's it's a lot. Hey, let me get this thing easier for you. How dare you, you b Hank also had a history of being depicted as unstable, especially within the Yellow Jacket persona, which he donned in issue 59. What happened was revealed in issue 60. It was a result of an accident involving chemicals which altered his brain in, as they describe it, an induced schizophrenic episode. And he thinks that he killed Hank, and then he becomes a villain to the Avengers, and kidnaps Jan, and forces himself on her. But she kind of goes with it because she recognizes from the forced kiss that, oh, that's Hank. And these are also the two issues where they get married. The Yellow Jacket persona was rooted in instability for him, mental instability and dark times. And it still was. Hank was struggling in this period and it's just going to keep going. He's going to keep struggling. Eventually, he's even going to try to kill himself because we don't just have to look back for things leading up to this panel. We can look forward to the fallout, for example, in the very next issue where we still see this big black eye on Janet. It just feels so visceral and so realistic in a way that's very juxtaposed with the types of stories that you're used to seeing in this genre. Do you wish to see him, madam? Not really, but I suppose it's necessary. All right, Jenkins, my shades are discreetly in place. Lead me to him. Does your eye still hurt a great deal, madam? My hair is pink in this recolored panel for some reason. Yes, and it's still swollen shut. But you know, Jenkins, I'm seeing more clearly than ever now. Seconds later in the living room, in a fabulous jumpsuit. What can I do for you? Hello, Janet. It's good to see you again. I've been wandering around in a fog since the trial. I guess I look like a mess. Is that what you came to tell me? No, no. I guess there's nothing to say, Jan. You, you hate me, don't you? No, Hank. I pity you, but not enough to put up with you. I don't want you here, Hank. Now or ever again. I'm getting a divorce. Jan. Don't worry, Hank. You can name the settlement you want. Jan, I know it's too late to talk, but I want to anyway. How's your eye? I guess I gave you quite a shiner, huh? Shiner is a cute word for something that's painful and humiliating. It makes me sick, and so do you. I I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to hit you. I was upset. You were more than upset, Hank. You're a deeply troubled man. You need help. I, I know, Jan. If only you could... Sorry, Hank. This cuts pretty deep. 
Also, the line, I didn't mean to hit you, very much confirms what happened. And just the way that this is presented, it sticks with you. This isn't poorly written or handled, quite the opposite. This is the world outside your window in a brutal, realistic way that almost shatters the fantasy element at play. This is potentially more world outside your window than most people are looking for. There are just certain things that many people don't really want to engage with in these stories. Some things that they leave a more lasting impact when they're implemented and so one has to be aware of that they put them in play. They're things that just have such strong heightened emotions and are so tied to more realistic stories that they can be difficult to implement into worlds like this without either breaking them or breaking the characters or drastically altering the tone. And they can really lead to some instances that really stick with you. And this is one of them. That doesn't always have to be a negative, but it is worth noting that these types of stories tend to elicit strong reactions. This does read like a realistic abusive relationship. And that's largely why it's so hard to come back from and so character breaking and why for fans of Hank Pym's Ant-Man, it proves so devastating. Because it didn't come out of nowhere. This isn't something you can write off as, oh, he's just written entirely out of character. It feels like it could be in place given the character's history and relationship, even if it's not a way many would have wanted it to go. It's a good story, though some would argue otherwise, either for what it did to the character or for not liking seeing such plots in this genre. But for what it is, it's decently handled. The pain, the feelings, the fallout. The thing is, as mentioned, it lingers. This isn't the kind of thing that can be ignored, but something a character will have to atone for. And in a type of genre like this, a forever story, that has a very different impact, especially as time has gone on you have the digital archives, now you can pull this panel up more easily than ever. It's very difficult for people to just forget it or memory hole it. It's also one of the more significant moments for the character, which again makes it difficult to just push aside. Hank Pym doesn't have the same amount of moments as some other characters do to fall back upon. This instead is one of them. We have something like Ultron. <laughs> just not many good moments for Hank Pym. The fact that this storyline is largely framed as an abusive one it makes it harder to separate than say Reed slapping Sue because she's possessed by malice and we're doing doing the whole, you need to snap out of it trope. And again, that's also a more fantastical kind of story beat. So it doesn't exactly resonate the same way. It's like, oh, she was possessed by a kind of mental This panel is a character defining moment that would require people who want to use Hank to get past it. But some shy away from using him for this reason. Or when they do use him, even if they try to move past it, this still comes up. Oh, he's wearing Ultron's skin or Ultron's wearing his skin. What about that slap panel? Some find that this is unfair, others do not. I want to hear what you think about that down below. Do you think it's time to move past it? Or do you think that no, it needs to come up and be addressed? It's just that kind of story beat. But for some, their frustration with this panel stems from a different source. The idea that maybe this panel should never have happened in the first place. In 2011, Jim Shooter wrote a blog post entitled, Hank Pym was not a wife beater, in of which he discussed specifically this storyline and this panel. And he details setting about looking to end Jan and Hank's marriage because Marvel hates marriage. And we have quotes, long quotes, subtle in because we need the context. Also, Jim Shearer is one of those people who gives good quotes. Let's do it. Quote time. I reread every single appearance of both characters. His history was largely a litany of failure, always changing guises and switching back and forth from research to heroing because he wasn't succeeding at either. He was never the Avenger who saved the day at the end and usually the first knocked out or captured. His most notable achievement in the lab was creating Ultron. Meanwhile, his rich, beautiful wife succeeded in everything she tried. She was also always flitting around his shoulders, flirting, saying things to prop up his ego. Firstly, regardless of how one feels about the storyline or shooter. Props for going back and reading everything and then trying to get the context and frame the story around the character's actual personalities and histories. It's the least one can do and it really aids to strengthen the story and give one a handle on the characters. And if there are way too many issues, then at least the core ones. It's one of those things where even to ask an editor or these days chat GPT, you still need to look for yourself because it's not the same as looking at it yourself. There may be some little detail or instance or something that was misconstrued. It's just, it's always good to put your own eyes on things. Anyway, back to plans for this panel. In that story, issue 213, I think, there is a scene in which Hank is supposed to have accidentally struck Jan while throwing his hands up in despair and frustration, making a sort of get away from me gesture while not looking at her. Bob Hall, who had been taught by John Buscema to always go for the most extreme action, turned that into a right cross. There is no time to have it redrawn, which to this day has caused the tragic story of Hank Pym to be known as the wife beater story. So let's unpack this from a couple of angles. There is an interesting idea there that this was meant to be a story that made you feel bad and sympathetic for Hank. And and definitely the way this panel is presented takes away from that because you can feel pity for him like the Wasp, but also it's very hard to sympathize because of what has happened. Even with all the stuff you saw him going through, it's still 
he crossed the line. The other issue is, regardless of shove or right cross, it was clear that he was supposed to strike her or lay hands on her in some way. Then the black eye panels afterwards really send that idea home. Would the result have been a lot different if it had more clearly been an accident? Or would people still feel, given the additional context leading up to it, that it was still very much an instance of domestic violence? It's hard to say. It may have lessened the impact that this panel had on Hank Pym, but again, it may not have. Hank was not making it out of the storyline untarnished. Though some feel it would have changed everything and this whole panel was an accident and shouldn't be referenced again. Others, oftentimes those who dislike Shooter, though you don't have to to hold this opinion, but it helps, believe that he was lying, that he always intended it to be pow right in the kisser and is walking it back because now it's unpopular. Some say that he was the editor in chief. If he wanted to, we could have changed it. What's the likelihood of that? It's hard to say. It could be, but it's also equally plausible that given the communication methods that were in place because of the Marvel method, which often saw not much communication between artist and writer after the initial exchange of notes. Also the fact that he was the editor, meaning he was overseeing a lot of different things, and his penchant for wanting things to get out on time, paramount above all else, really could have led to him pushing out the story even if he wasn't entirely happy with the panel. And maybe that was coupled with him thinking that maybe it wouldn't have been that big a deal. Or just the fact that based on those statements, it didn't seem like he was overly fond of Hank Pym in the first place. So may not have seen it as that great of a loss if his reputation was damaged. But again, that's all speculative. So feel free to speculate down below. Some wonder just what the notes said. What could have been written to get the panel drawn in this way? Well, I have quotes from Bob Hall and what he remembers about this. Yes, I have the quotes. He stated some things on a comment thread on Bleeding Cool. Oh yes, I got dirty for this one, down and dirty. Bob Hall stated, I never heard Jim's side of the story. He never said he didn't like the slap panel. On the other hand, I can't imagine that he did. I would never have drawn that panel two or three years later, and I certainly wouldn't draw it now the way I did then. I have no memory of how the panel was described in the synopsis, but the Marvel method gave you a lot of leeway. What I interpreted then might have been quite different from how I would look at it now. I can't imagine Shooter would not have asked for a redraw had there been time. He then describes how he came to that particular version of the panel, because there were multiple attempts. I remember redrawing that particular panel several times. Not for Jim, but because I didn't like the results. The final panel was the point where I gave up and thought, I know how to do Marvel action. I'll make it Marvel action, because nothing else I've done seems right either. Marvel had a very specific style. There were very specific ways that they did things, the way that the art should look, all of those things. The Marvel method, it broke up the work so that it could be done in segments and hence faster. The idea was you weren't supposed to have to be waiting for anybody. You could just get things done. It was developed in the early days of Marvel when Stan Lee was essentially writing everything. <laughs> Although that also led to some of the contentions when it was claimed by the artists that actually they were writing and plotting things. So it's a method that while it has its benefits, also has its downsides and has led to some drama. So at the end of the day, what does Hall think about this panel? He stated, I'm not ashamed of the issue. I did the best I could then. But in this instance, I don't doubt Jim's story. So what do you think now you have all of these different pieces? Does it make the panel hit different? I made a pun about the slap panel. I'm canceled now. The fruit was low and I plucked it. It was forbidden and yet I still ate it. As it stands for Hank Pym, this panel really did change things for him. It altered the course of his character and some would argue that he's never fully recovered. Even look at things like the MCU, how we skipped straight to Scott so we could avoid having to talk about it at all. This panel certainly cemented the view that Shooter had of him and leaves some fans in a frustrated quagmire where they feel like they can't or shouldn't or are told by others that they shouldn't like Hank or that storyline or any of it. You will see arguments where people will say that they like Hank and then they'll be jumped on as abuse apologists and all kinds of things because it's the wild west out here. It's dangerous in these streets. Main character syndrome, taking things out of context, misconstruing things and just generalized arguments because of lack of context, tone, just looking for a fight. It's wild out here. There's no shame in just getting out. Get out while you can. And if you enjoy Hank and you just want to enjoy the character, you enjoy the new stories, you don't have any connection to the past panel, you just want to put it in a box, you feel it never should have happened, you feel it's a good story and he's moved on from it, you feel how you want to feel, like the characters you want to like. And if you want to get into a fight about it, do it. If you don't, don't. The point is, this can get big and messy. And there can be strong feelings around it because of the subject that it's talking about. And honestly, because of how realistically the moment is presented. It's a hot mess and I want to put it out to you because I know you have a lot to say. When I started doing cursed panels, of course this one came up and people even started arguing under the people who suggested we should do this panel. There was also an interesting Mandela effect where some people said I had already talked about it but I hadn't. Now I have. So tell me what you think. 
Do you think this was a good story? Do you entirely disagree? Do you think it was mishandled, should never have happened, or just was not handled maturely for what was there? Do you think it's an unheroic tale that should not have been told, that this really tarnishes and damages the whole hero's story? Do you think there were other ways to end a marriage? Can't Marl just end a marriage without it being someone hitting somebody or making a deal with the devil? What happened to a good old fashioned divorce? Do stories like this have a place in the Marvel Universe or are they character breaking? Or why is this story too far but something like Tony Stark's alcoholism isn't? Which real world issues get to come out and play and which don't? Do you feel that maybe this is Hank's place, the tarnished and fallen hero seeking redemption and that there's room for that too? That not every hero needs to be perfect or pristine? Or do you feel that on a team like the Avengers, yeah they do? It's a fascinating discussion. For me, this is an interesting story that branched out in some interesting directions and continues to. But it really does slash did hurt Hank as a character and place him on a certain trajectory and path that it's very hard, if impossible, to get him off of. So I can see why some wish it never happened, especially if they didn't agree with that sentiment that he was just a loser, cowardly character who never got to save the day. Maybe people would have liked to see an arc where he could have succeeded instead of fallen further. Some may also get frustrated when it seems like this is the only part of his history that people care about or remember. Other things happened. He invented Ultron. Other things really did happen, but now you can remember him being worn as a skin suit. That's a thing. You know the drill. I want to hear from you. Tell me things down below. Also, more cursed panels you want to talk about, put them down below. While you're down there talking about all this, please follow YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking this time out of your day to spend comments with me. I always appreciate it, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.